this might be one of my favorite readings in the whole lectionary. It's the gospel reading for the third Sunday in Advent. It's that chance where uh, Lutherans get to virtue signal at each other by wearing totally not pink on the uh, the altar. It's, it's rose, sure. Uh, rather, it's John the Baptist sitting in prison doubting. And I love it because it's a confrontation with my own. It's a chance to actually find a place to put the words that I also struggle to say because people are actually willing to sort of deal with a whole lot before it sort of bubbles to the surface in some kind of spoken truth. We, we usually just try and sort of hint at what's wrong and hope people will pick up on it. But John just comes right out and says it. He sends his disciples to go find Jesus to say, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Because, well... Jesus promised to save even the prisoners. He's the one who's supposed to give sight to the blind and make the lame walk and cleanse the lepers and free the prisoners. And John is in prison for doing the very things that the Lord sent him to do. And John is still in prison. Jesus says he is more than a prophet, greatest in the kingdom of God, but he sits in prison struggling with doubt. But for some reason, we Christians are afraid to admit to the same thing. And well, I wonder if it's because we think if we actually say the word that's on our mind, everybody will look at us differently, that they will judge us for actually wondering whether or not this is true, that this will somehow change things for the worse and make things real in a way that means we can't just pretend things are fine anymore. I don't know how long it really took John to finally send his disciples to answer his doubt or how often you might struggle with the right words to actually confess what's wrong and still come up short. But I know that things don't look the way they're supposed to down here and all of us are wondering about it. So Jesus answers. Jesus pierces through what we mean to say and he speaks words of peace, not just signs and wonders, but sure and certain words and promises of God. The poor have the good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Offended by the idea that uh, this gospel can even endure the poor still being poor at the end of the sermon. Even when some of the blind can't see yet and not all of the lame can walk and John is still in prison. He is not called to find comfort in the signs themselves and the other people who got help, but he didn't. But in the words and promises of God that endure forever, that roll over our uncertainty and hesitation, that act in fulfillment of every last promise. For our Lord has advented, shown up, not simply to heal a handful of people and leave the rest of us aside, but to bleed and die for all of us, for me, for you, for all. And you are allowed to struggle with it. The poor need the good news preached to them because, well, they do. <laughs> they're, they're in the midst of sin and death and the power of the devil. You're allowed to doubt, not because it's good, but because if we cannot by our own reason or strength believe this stuff, this is something that actually does have to be answered. Even John's doubt in prison prepares the way of the Lord to answer it. This is what he is, the forerunner. This is what he gives us, a place to hear the promises of God. The word of the Lord unites our voices. It gives us the words that we can't find. And that is a hope that doesn't simply grow from the inside out by a determination to never struggle with this stuff. But the good news is preached to you, your Lord, Advents. He shows up. He takes flesh to bleed and die on the cross, and he will return on a last great day. But even now, even here, even in the midst of doubt and the words you struggle to find, he advents. He sits on your altar on Sunday in body and blood for you to eat and drink. God is not far away when we struggle. He's actually what where he promised to be. Thanks be to God. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.